Welcome to For the Long Run, the podcast exploring the why behind what keeps runners running long, strong, and motivated. I'm your host, Jonathan Levitt. Through personal and professional connections in the running world, I have the privilege of getting to know some amazing athletes. I've always been fascinated by the psychological aspect of running, and this podcast is aimed at exploring this and much more. I hope you enjoy. Welcome back. Today, I have Ellie Pell with me. Ellie, thanks for joining today. Thanks for having me. Of course. So um, I've known you for a while, and we finally met in uh, in Atlanta a couple of weeks ago, which feels like God, it feels like a year ago at this point. Uh, so um, thanks for uh, thanks for coming on the podcast today. First question: um, Who is Ellie? So Ellie is your friendly local barista, sandwich maker. I manage a cafe that's very popular here in Ithaca. And I really like to run. So I do that a lot on the side when I'm not managing a cafe. And not only do you run a lot, you run fast and uh, you've won some races, right? I've won a couple races. Yeah, 2019 was actually a very, very good year for me race wise. And coincidentally, it was also the most fun I've ever had training. Um, And I don't really think that was because I was winning. I think it was more, it was just, I had people to run with and um, I was very lucky. Didn't get any injuries, didn't feel burnt out at all. And I had a very balanced approach to what I was doing. And it just, it was wonderful. Do you think you saw that progress because you were having all that fun? Like what, where's the, um, you know, is it sort of like a chicken and egg analogy? Yeah, I think that I had two training partners that were just like a little bit faster than me. And so whenever I thought I was at my limit, they were just a little bit ahead of me. And it was inspiring in the fact that I knew that I could get there eventually if I just kept trying. And so every time we'd meet for a workout, it was me... I got the opportunity to push my own limits every week and just to see a little bit of progress here and there, but also have people that were encouraging me was paramount to just having fun and then winning. Cool. And how long have you been running for? I've been running for about seven years. And what was, what was the initial reason that you started running? I first started running when I moved here to Ithaca. Um, I didn't know anyone. I didn't really have any friends and I didn't have any money. So running was like free therapy and also free. It made me feel better, free fitness. And I really started getting into listening to podcasts back then too. So I would queue up a podcast when I was running and it was kind of like running with a friend. And I found out that I'd really enjoyed it. And then I had a little bit of success. I won a local half marathon here. And in doing that, I met a lot of people. And so then I was introduced to the running community, which was even better. And so I just, I really liked it and I continue to like it. And so I'm just going to keep doing it because it's really fun. Cool. So community and fitness and uh, exploration, um, seems to be the, the initial reason what, what has kept you going over, over these seven years? I think that different things at different times, it really depends on what I need. Um, so I started cause it was free therapy basically. And I keep going because, I really do just love this community. I love everything that it's done for me. I like pressing my limits and I like connecting with new people and trying new things. Um, And I also like seeing progress. So I am really invested in the long game. And I like that if you put a lot of dedication and time into something, that you eventually will see progress as long as you don't do it wrong or not well I don't know if there is a wrong it's more like too fast or yeah go too fast or and I mean I've made all those mistakes so I think that I'm getting smarter with the as I each with each year um and actually ironically now I feel like we're coming back full circle because 
Um, it's what March 29th, and we are in the midst of a pandemic. And so there aren't any races. And I don't really feel motivated by fast time goals right now. I'm actually more motivated by the free therapy, because I have lost my job due to this pandemic temporarily. And so I have a lot of time. And so I've done a lot of running in the past two weeks, <laughs> because it's one time when I can escape what's going on on in the news and just like I, I've actually been queuing up old podcasts that I used to listen to that made me feel comforted and feel better like when I started running and I'm mm -hmm. listening to those again and they do the same thing like I feel better so yeah we're, we're full circle now <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it's it, it's a weird time for sure and um I'm fortunate in where I am with my job and I'm extremely grateful of the position I'm in, but I feel the same exact way on the running side as you do. Um, I, and I'm, I, I'm in a bit of a different place where I'm coming back to running after almost two months off. And so just being able to go outside and run, even if it's 20 or 30, like today I ran for 30 minutes for the first time in two months, even to just be able to do that and like put the rest of the world on pause for 30 minutes is uh, a blessing at this time. Yeah, it really um, has reminded me of why I run. And I don't think, I think one of the reasons that 2019 and so far has been that I've had a very like happy and uh, successful trajectory is that like at the end of the day, I'm not running for anything other than it's just fun. And mm -hmm. it's something that I really just enjoy doing most of the time. Of course, the, in two days, this two, two mornings this past week, it's been raining. So like, sometimes that's a little bit, you know, not fun. But I really believe that as long as you're healthy and happy, generally, no run is a bad run. Mm -hmm. And so it's really just, uh, it's been, very, been made very evident in this, in these past like two weeks, because there are no races, there are no, there is no real motivation to do workouts or anything, but I'll still continue to run. And it's still the best part of my day. Awesome. Um, so a couple, so, so speaking of fast times, a couple of weeks ago, you did run in the trials. Um, when did you when did you set that as a goal or did you set that as a goal um, in, in the last few months or years? So it definitely was in the last few months. I did not have it as a goal. I thought it was really cool that my two training partners, well, at that point, they were just two women that I ran with maybe once a week. We didn't train together until um, this past summer. And I thought it was really neat that they had done it. And I kind of thought that, you know, maybe someday, or I still don't know. I don't, I don't know if I, I kind of felt like being an elite athlete at that level was like a huge in, investment and even more than I already did. And I kind of still felt like, like running is a huge part of my life. And I just, it wasn't sure if I one to had the talent because I didn't run in high school or college or in two also I just didn't know what that meant investment wise but after I won the Buffalo Marathon in 2019 with a time of 247 my two training partners they were like you're almost there just train with us this summer and we'll see you might as well give it a try you're a you're a couple minutes away. And at that point, I was still really enjoying the marathon. I knew I needed to take a break after Buffalo, but I was really enjoying the training. And so I had training partners and it just sort of seemed like the cards and the, all the signs were pointing me in this direction. So then that summer, uh, I trained with them for the Hartford Marathon, and they were training for Twin Cities. And so we met two to three times a week. Um, I saw what they were doing, and I just started to believe and buy in that I could get there too. And I was having so much fun. And so uh, at Hartford, I ran uh, 241. 
And that qualified me for the Olympic trials. And at the trials, I ran a 244.59. So I squeaked <laughs> under that 245 standard one more time. Um, and you it's, ran it's, a 244.59. Yeah, it's my official time. Amazing. <laughs> uh, what a day. What a day. And and you uh, looked like you were having so much fun. Oh, it was. That weekend was like the best weekend of my life. It's It was so much fun. The running, the everyone there, my sister was there, meeting people, having a blast. Um, and it was great. And so I do not regret doing anything. I, I had such a good summer. Such a, I had a, not that great of a build up to the trials, but that's winter for you here in upstate New York. And I was also a little tired. I mean, my 2019 was very busy with races, not only marathons, but I did a couple ultras too. And I was tired. I, I definitely think that if I didn't qualify for the trials, I probably would have taken a little break and not trained for another marathon on but it's the olympic trials so i did the best that i could um and yeah it's just that was really amazing and i'm so glad that all that happened and um i don't know what the future is going to hold especially now but i i think i have a little bit of a break that i don't need to decide because there's nothing to decide on that is for sure so um, that was sort of the conversation I had with Shalane on the podcast a couple of weeks ago where it was, um, you know, you, everyone sort of needs to reassess why they're doing it because racing is a major question mark at this point, whether it's for the spring or the summer or even the fall. Um, it's really hard to get out the door without knowing why you're doing it. And I think that we'll see a pretty large pivot. We'll have a lot of people really, really fit and happy in the fall. And I think a lot of people also will not be running in the fall. And and I hope that that a lot of new runners are born out of this um, because it's like the only thing that you can do. Yes. It's the only thing that's not against the law yet. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully it won't be. Um, so did you have sort of that explore that like internal exploration of like what am I doing? Why am I doing it? Um I know that I love running. It's never been about racing. I like racing because it's fun. And my favorite part of racing is in the last couple miles. And it really hurts. But you still somehow have that drive to just keep going. If at the end of an ultra, just keep going. Or at the end of a race, like kick it into a different year. And I really, really like that. I think it's fun. I like racing. People say a lot of my training partners think I race a lot and I don't think I over race. That's not, it's not like an every weekend kind of thing, but I do like the environment in racing. I like testing myself, but at this point right now, how I, how I feel right now is, you know, I know a lot of people are continuing to do workouts or continuing to maybe like do something um, like a race type situation and get their heart rate up. But right now I'm just motivated to get outside and just, you know, I don't have to be anywhere. And so just being in that zone of like, you know, the, but like the easy pace miles that are just, you're just out there and taking in your surroundings, you're being present. And so right now running really is what it's all it's still what it's always been for me I love doing it it's it's a great part of my day to get out there I feel weird if I don't do it and I don't really have any motivation to train for anything right now so um, my relationship with running hasn't really changed and except for the fact that it's more therapy miles than training for anything miles got it how has your evolution as a runner changed as you've gotten up in distance? Well, I should say that I practice the things in a race more, but I don't do that. Um, <laughs> I know. I really need to, like, I don't practice nutrition. I don't practice those things, and I should. But I haven't, I'm t I feel like it's going to be one of those times where I have a really bad, like, nutrition experience and then I'll start practicing but I've been really <laughs> lucky and I haven't so here you go I think as a runner as I it, say not as I do <laughs> yeah exactly like yes please practice your nutrition don't watch me uh I 
I think it's more, I got into like a little bit of like a year to two year span of feeling like I had something to prove or that I wanted to do like tons of epic things. And those two years, like I, I, had some injury and then you know when you get injured you're like well when I get back I'm gonna do this and this and this or like the gnarliest thing and I think my evolution as a runner has really become I know what I like and sometimes it's okay to just stay in your lane I think that it's I'm never going to be the best at anything. And that's beautiful because, and I'm also not paid to do this. So it really was like a come to Jesus moment where I was like, you like to run because you like to run and do what makes you happy. So I was doing ultras and I started doing ultras because I wasn't happy like like with splits or I just didn't feel like I was an authentic marathoner. I don't really know what that means. And so I sort of moved to the trails a couple of years ago and I really liked that for a while, but then I got caught up in the the next toughest thing or the next whatever that I thought I should be doing. And then I got burnt out from that. So then that brought me back to the road. And then I start, and that was in the end of 2018 and to end of 2018 and 2019, I had a great time on the road because I just was like, I'm a beginner here and I'm just having fun. And that's just what I want to do right now. And, um, then I did a couple ultras, but my mindset was just so different on the trails and ultras because I chose, I choose races because I know I'm probably going to like them. Mm-hmm. And I just think that, I choose them more for like them being fun or them um, complimenting my running style. I'm not like, I'm, I don't feel at this point because who knows what will happen. I like running the whole time. I don't like the sections where you have to hike or scramble. That's just not my forte right now. And so I think my evolution as a runner has been just accept what you like and accept what your body wants to do. Cause normally you're the happiest when those two things overlap and just yeah. accept that. I love that. So, um, Devin Yanko, who was one of the early guests on this podcast, um, gave me basically that exact advice. Um, I was, I can't remember when it was, it was, it must've been yeah, it was before Way Too Cool last year. So it must have been last March or Feb- last February. So February or, or March of 2019. So I was trying to figure out what to do in 2019. And I had um, I had just run my first 50K and I wasn't sure if I wanted to commit to a spring 50K or a spring marathon or a half marathon, 5K. Um and I was feeling the draw of the roads again after exactly the same thing that you said. I got super caught up in training for Boston 2017 and was getting that burnout of like, I'm minding every split. And if I don't hit a seven minute pace, you know, the run was a fail and the long run needs to be a 720 or whatever it is. And it, it got to a point where like it wasn't healthy and I wasn't progressing. And then I ran Boston and well, I was progressing and then I ran Boston and ran an hour over goal time. And I was like, Oh, okay. I need to like take a step back here and like reassess everything. So I jumped on to into trail running and in the, in that fall I had a blast. Um, and then I did the 50 K which wasn't the 50 K I thought it was going to be, but you know, the fires had other, another say with that. Um, and then I wasn't sure what to do. And and I, I asked Devin, I was like, look, you've done everything and you're good at everything. Um, well, what do you suggest? How do you have that? How do you have that kind of range? She's like, I follow what, what makes me happy. I don't care about the external validation. If somebody wants me to run a hundred miler, I'm not going to run the hundred miler unless I want to run the hundred miler. Or if I want to go fast and run a marathon, I'll go run a marathon. So I thought that was like, it's just so simple, but coming from someone like that, um, it was really reaffirming and sort of validated what you said and what, what I was thinking as well, that like, yeah, (laughs) you get the best results when you're having the most fun. I totally agree. And Devin, I think that's another reason she and I get along so well. We have a pretty 
good back and forth over Instagram DM. And, you know, usually same thing. Like if I start to overthink something, I'm, I sort of will like reach out to her and she always has just the right thing to say because she really has done a lot of things and she has been both on the sponsored athlete side and the not. And, you know, she is just, she just does what makes her happy and really, gives no fucks and it's very refreshing and I and I and the thing is she's also very open about mental health and about her autoimmune dis- conditions and some things that she's going with so it's not like it's all sunshine and rainbows to give no fucks and do whatever you want but right. it also is just the, the this decision is not world ending or life affirming or whatever it it's just running and that's just what we do and we're gonna do it so you might as well pick something that you want to do i love it um i think she's even like published a blog about like how to give less bucks <laughs> it's like it's just like just do what you want and and yeah from the perspective of a professional runner even um she still has that attitude and it works. And I think it's relatable because um, the majority of us are not professional runners and we're doing it for fun. And so if you're not having fun, what's the point? Yeah, definitely. And I definitely think a lot of runners are reassessing that right now. Uh, yeah. And I love it because um, I think there's going to be a lot of good that comes out of this racing break, I guess. Um, maybe not for you know, running stores and races and, you know, things like that. But I think for running in general, I think that people will hopefully develop a healthier relationship with, um, with the sport and they'll do it if they want to do it and they won't do it if they don't want to do it. And it's, it's crazy. Cause I see like, I see a lot of complaining like, Oh, I have to do this workout. I have to do this long run. And yeah, I've been there, but if that's, if that's all that's going on, you don't have to do it. Just run just like, or don't run. Um, I think I'm preaching to the choir here with you though. No. And I get (laughs) it. And it's so as somebody that does really, I've been on a training plan for the past, well, some sort of plan for the past year. And so there is that you do feel when you wake up on Tuesday morning and it's either like 90 degrees and a thousand percent humidity or zero degrees and the sleet is in your eye and you're like, I have to do a workout today. Sometimes you do feel like that. And so I guess now we're in this blessed time where, um, you don't, if you don't want to don't, I mean, there are some, like, there are some times when, it's, I feel like for me, sometimes it's fighting the line between like, am I just being a wimp or is this something I really don't want to do? And I mean, and right now it doesn't matter because either way you can be a wimp or if you don't want to do it, don't do it. Yeah, it's great. I saw someone post that they, they woke up yesterday and they didn't feel like doing a long run. So they didn't. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> hell yeah, that's awesome. Um, and I hope again, I hope that we can carry that approach way beyond whenever this craziness ends, because that's how we improve. Um, My coach, David Roche is all about, and he's framed, he and Megan have framed it in a really interesting way that um, like when they look at an athlete and they assess an athlete, they're making a three to five year plan. It's not a one year plan. It's not a two year plan. It's a three to five year plan. And how do you, how do you achieve your goals in the long term? consistency how do you achieve consistency don't get injured how do you not get injured don't overdo it and and don't race too much and don't you know do too many workouts so in a period like this you remove some of those those risk variables and you can just put in work and put in volume and um if you miss a workout or if you miss a long run who cares exactly i was going to say on the flip side to that if if you like the beauty of thinking in like a three, five, 10 year plan as is that it takes a lot of pressure off the today. Yeah. It's like the, the, I am building something and we don't know what it is yet. And we don't know what the outcome is going to be. 
but also it's okay if, you know, today isn't your day or if, you know, you just, the motivation isn't there, it'll come back and it's okay if it's not today because you don't need to exemplify your fitness on Sunday. You, it's a three to five to 10 year plan and we're all just on this bus and we're all going to ride it. And I think for me, at least that takes tons of pressure off because I know that if I want to get into the two thirties as I'm only two minutes away, but that's a lot of time. And I know that if I want to keep improving in that way or decrease my 50 K time or, you know, it's going to take time. And so I, I, I think reminding myself of that, especially when I go to bed, and especially in this time, is that this is just a period where nobody knows what's going on, and you don't need to know what's going on because this you're still on this three to five to ten year plan. Definitely, and I want to ask about your three to five to ten year plan in just a second, but what you were saying makes total sense. We're building this, I like to call it like a wall, or the wall of fitness, and the sum of every brick on a daily basis builds the wall. But if you miss a brick, the wall will still stand. You can't miss too many bricks because then it crumbles. But you can miss a brick here, you can miss a brick there, and it's not, you know, it's not going to be the end of the wall. So question, um, what is your three to five plus year plan? Oh Lord. The beauty <laughs> and the terrifying reality of that is that I can do whatever I want. So <laughs> it can be, it changes all the time. Um, and it really, I still go back to whatever lights my fire is what I'm going to do. And the thing is, is when I follow that, or when I realize what doors are being open for me, that's usually when I actually excel in across the board. So when I was training for the marathon, I didn't think that I was going to set a 50k PR and win two races outright in the 50k when I was running training for a marathon. Um, but it's kind of like Coach Ben Rosario from Naz Elite says, when you're fit, you're fit. And so yeah. sometimes it just translates. Like maybe if I had run a 10K, then I would have set a PR in a 10K, even though I've never run a 10K before in my life. So it would have been a PR. But, <laughs> you know, I I really just, I, I wish that I had concrete goals sometimes, but also I just know that's not me. It's kind of like I never follow an exact training plan. I don't have a coach. I sort of look to a bunch of different people, including your coach, David, and my training partner's coach. Like, I don't have a set plan because I just have the mental uh, I, I hang up or, or OCD perfectionist tendency that if I had a plan and I missed something, that was that would just eat at me. And so I, I need to be a little bit more loose and a little bit free myself of those bonds of the bonds that I put on myself. Obviously it's not the coach it, it really. Um, and so I, I don't have a three to five to 10 year plan except that I hope that I'm running. And because you know what, I even had a, a spring plan and a, a wrench got thrown in it. So, uh, I don't really plan that much. So I know that's not satisfying. I would love to say this and this and this, but I have bucket list races. So maybe that would be more interesting, but yeah, I don't those? have like a time or whatever. What are the bucket list races? So I want to do comrades. That's number one. I think that would be really fun. And that would definitely be an awesome vacation. And again, it's something that I think I would excel at. Um, I think that... I would only want to do Western States if I got in on a golden ticket, because I think that one, that's the only way I could probably get in because lotteries just aren't my, I'm not lucky. <laughs> and um, two, I think that would signify the purpose of a golden ticket race that you could be ready to run Western States. So I am interested in that, but I think that it would be most telling for me and my body if I won my way in. I'm not married to it. I know a lot of people are. So I also wouldn't want to enter the lottery if I wasn't 100% committed. Um, I would like to eventually do Boston. I know that's your jam. But also, it's Boston is like Western States for me in that I need to want to do it because so many people want to do it. And it's not fair if I take a place and I'm not 100% invested. 
So right now my bucket list race is comrades. Um, and I'll stick with that. I think that's my wheelhouse. Why do you think that's your wheelhouse? Just a, a runnable. Yeah. A runnable 50? 50 mile race. That seems pretty fun. I mean, I've heard nothing but good things about it. And, um, I think it, it, like Atlanta was just all encompassing. It was like a vacation and also new experiences. I met a lot of people and also I got to run. I mean, comrades, that's exactly what that would be a vacation. I get to meet a lot of people and I get to run. And so I think that's uh, right now that's my bucket list race, but who knows? And in, uh, in, d- depending on how all this, the world pans out, who knows what's going to happen. But right now, comrades. Cool. Um, and then one other thing you mentioned was breaking 240. Yeah, I think it's doable. So breaking 240 is the next goal in the marathon. And I think I could do that and then also translate that training for comrades. So I'd like to keep training in a way that I can maximize both my potential in the marathon, but then also run a fast 50K or 50 miler. There are a couple goals in there that it that uh, I think I could excel at if I kept up with the training for the marathon, kept training with that, but then also translated it to like a flat, fast 50K or even, I mean, it doesn't even need to be flat, but just a 50K that I can run the whole time that still is hilly. That's okay. But I just like need to be able to run it. What is it about the the fast marathon to 50 milers that you like so much? One of my favorite feelings in the world is just flying. And I feel like I feel the most like that when I'm able to run just on a road or on a nice trail or just, I just like running and part of, and I like being able to run fast when I've already been running for like 30 miles. I think that's the best feeling in the world. Yeah. Like having legs at mile 40 of a 50 miler or mile 30 of a 40 miler or mile 20 of a, th- of a 50 K that is the best feeling. Cause you know, you, then you know that you did your nutrition that you didn't practice correctly <laughs> and it's kicking in and that like mile 20 to 30 and a 50 K that is my jam. I just love that part and it, I just feel like I'm flying and is that flow maybe sometimes but also other times I, I can it sometimes is but I also it's I know I'm working hard like it's not effortless it takes mm-hmm. effort but I also just feel so fast and I feel like a deer and it's just I love that feeling and I it's just something that I haven't been able to I don't feel the same way hiking up a climb at mile 40, even if I still feel good, I just don't, it's just not the same thing for me yet. And I know that other people, that's their jam. And so I I need to learn from them. I do have a couple friends that are teaching me like hiking and teaching me how to just be there and go slower and it'll actually be faster in the end. But that's not my experience right now. So I think just the flat, fast 50 Ks or even just easy trail 50 Ks where I can just motor on in. It's wonderful. Cool. Do you do any mental training? My life is mental training. Oh (laughs) yes, I am such a believer in positive psychology. Um, I don't really want to get into this, but like I didn't have the greatest um, end of teens and early twenties. And, but one thing that I did do and what got me, out of it and got me into the positive place that I am right now is all is tons of positive mental training. Like just every day, it was hard, but just every day telling yourself that things will be better or that it's okay. Things are fine. You're okay. And just, I definitely, uh, I took a positive psychology course online and it takes a really long time, but if you can change your thoughts, you really can change your life. And then it becomes easier and you start seeing the glasses half full and half rather than half empty. And you don't, and you start seeing people in a different way that like, we're all in this together and we all usually do want other people to succeed. And it's, and 
when you don't grow up in that way, it's hard to teach yourself after the fact. So it's a couple of years there, you know, it was, it was really dark. And that's why I say running was my therapy. But I think that now I notice it a lot faster when I'm getting negative and I have a lot of different ways that don't include running that I use to pet myself up and um, just get myself into a different headspace. And I've had to use them in the past two weeks because being unemployed and not really able to go out very much isn't super great for people with mental health issues. So, yes, Um, that is for sure. And do you consider yourself an extrovert or an introvert? I'm an introvert in the sense that I love my job and that it's very social and that I do many, I will do anything for other people, but it's, (laughs) I will do something for someone, but I'm, it's hard for me to like drop every, you know, I'm in, that sounds bad. It's. (laughs) Like I need my my time at night to like recharge right. and it's harder for me to like drop everything and go like to the bar at like seven when someone calls me at 655. Like that's not my thing. But if somebody needed something or they're like, can you help me with this project in two days? Then I'm like, yes, I'm your person. Cause then I can like sort of concept get myself ready to go do that. And like, I don't know, budget my external energy so that I'm like, okay, I have enough energy for this and I'm ready. I'm not like awkwardly there just like, oh, I wish I wasn't here. Like it's awkward. Um, So I'm an introvert, but I, I guess an extroverted introvert, I really need that recharge time and I don't like making plans off the cuff, but um, I know it's, it challenges me and I know that things like that are good for me. So I do try to do a little bit of it, but definitely introverted. Very cool. Um, what do you wish you knew now? Uh, sorry, when you started running that you know now? Um, that the other women that you're running against are more your teammates than your competitors. And I think that it took me a little while because, I mean, I had some success when I started, but I think also I saw a lot of people that were having success as like, somehow they were taking opportunities away from me. It was very strange. It was very competitive. And I think in the past two to three years, I've really let that go because I, and and especially with like the women's running and athletics that has just boomed in the past six months, it really is, we're all in this together. And I mean, I want everybody to have a sub 240 marathon. Like I just, I, I, can I help you get there, please? You know? And I think that shift has also made running so much happier and so much better. I mean, it was already great, but just feeling, not feeling like you have to prove something every day. Like I don't go on Strava because I feel like everybody's just trying to prove something every day. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want to have to prove anything. I just want to do my thing. And then sometimes you show up to race and everything comes together and you get lucky and you have a good day. And I think everybody is starting to, I think a lot of the, my peers are starting to are understand that. And more people are starting to understand that, that we're not, it's, we're not against each other. We're all together. And I wish I knew that in the beginning of my competitive running career. Cool. If we want to follow along with your journey, where can we, uh, where can we find you? So my Instagram's at Gazelli, and that's also my Twitter is Gazelli um, with two Z's and two L's. Um, I have a website, elliepell.com, that has a blog that I do try and keep up with. I've I've been keeping up with it also if people are interested in what it's like to go through unemployment right now in this time. And then I do have a podcast as well that my friend Chris and I started. It's more, uh, it's it's kind of, it's, it's relaxed. It's about running, but it's, it's very relaxed and kind of peop, uh, the people that listen to it and tell me, they're like, we, we put it on. It's like, just, you guys are in the room with us and we're all just talking. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fun. And so we have about six episodes up right now. And yeah, so that's been, that's been really cool, but that's where you can follow me and always email. I respond to every message. I respond to every DM and email. So yeah, if you want to reach out. Awesome. Well, Ellie, thanks so much for uh, coming on today and for all of your amazing support on social media. And uh, we'll see you out there. Thank you for having me on. Of course. That's it for today's episode. 
Like many long runs, it's sad when it has to end. I hope you join in next week on For the Long Run. And in the meantime, happy trails. If you've enjoyed this episode, it would mean a lot to me if you shared it so that others can find it and enjoy it too.